In this video, we will take a look at Inventor 2011 Part Enhancements. We'll start off with a basic rectangular sketch here that's 4 by 2 and a half. Traditionally, we would start this extrusion by going to the ribbon and getting the command or using a shortcut key. In this case, with Inventor 2011, we can select on a line and get a direct manipulation mini toolbar. This allows us to choose Revolve, Extrude, or in this case, edit the sketch. Once we select extrude, we can see another mini toolbar pop up with extents options, direction options, and other extents options. We also have a new extents option called asymmetric. If I choose asymmetric, we can now extrude to both sides of that profile with a different value. And as you can see up top, the dialog box does change based on what happens in the mini toolbar. You can also see a new verbiage for the two extents or the from two extents. Here we'll type in one, go to the other side. We can dynamically pull on these arrows to change the extents. You can also type in a value. Here I'll do a Z positive equals oh, about uh, 1.25. On the other side, I'll do Z neg. Equals 2. And I'll just approve this. Now if I go to my parameters, you will see that there are now more parameters associated with an extrusion command especially when you do an asymmetric extrusion. I can also have different taper degrees going either direction. If I select an edge, I have an option to choose a fillet or a chamfer. If I hold down shift and select multiple edges, and then choose fillet, I will get one arrow on here allowing me to dynamically drag that fillet size. This is a fantastic graphical preview to see roughly how size your fillet will be. Then I can apply that or cancel or simply just say OK and approve that value. You can also list your parameters in any one of these boxes if you had user parameters set up or already named parameters such as in this case Z positive and Z negative. So let's go on to a, another simple base feature. Let's look at a revolve. Here I have a sketch with a center line. And as we know, if you have a sketch with a center line, the revolve command will automatically pick that up for a center of revolution. So when I choose revolve here in the mini toolbar, I don't have to choose an axis. However, if that axis was incorrect, I can click on either axis or, in this case, maybe even the profile to change my selection. I can also change from a full to an angular value, or I can also just pull on that arrow to change it, and also create an asymmetrical revolve. Now on the top up here, I'm going to chamfer those edges on the top and on the outside. So I'll hold down shift and get both of those, choose chamfer. And since this is equal distances, they will both change at the same time. If I changed my mind and I wanted something else besides equal distance, though, the mini toolbar only allows me to do one edge at a time. The only one that allows you to do multiple edges is just the standard equal distances. But again, you can see how easy the mini manipulation toolbar is to adjust your values. There's a lot less mouse travel back to any of your dialog boxes with these commands. Let's take a look at how this works with secondary features. If I select a face, I have an option to edit the extrusion, to edit the sketch, or create a brand new sketch. If I select an edge, 
I have options for extrude, revolve, hole, and also edit sketch. Here I'm going to choose an edge and then choose extrude. Now this prompts me to choose my profile. It doesn't automatically assume a profile, I do have to pick one. If I go straight up in this case, it will add material. If I go straight down, it actually will start the cut operation. So if I do actually want to add in that direction, I need to change my Boolean operation there. Let's go ahead and create a new sketch on this face and go up and grab point. Now if you're paying close attention, that's the first time I had to travel to my ribbon at all. Here's my hole command. Grab both centers. Okay. Make this uh, through all. So you can see how much less travel there is with your mouse and how many less clicks you actually have to go to the ribbon to perform. Let's uh, create an extrusion here. Let's do asymmetrical. Let's go up 40. And we'll go down about 20. And approve that. Now what if I wanted to have multi-solids in my part modeling? Well, a way I can do this is simply to edit the feature, or as I'm creating new features, to choose a new solid option. And this would be in your Boolean operations here. So I can do Join, Cut, Intersect, or New Solid. The only time that New Solid is not available is during your first base feature.